after the PPP weekly press conference, with me as usual is our General Secretary. He'll be reading a state, some statement, statement, sorry, right. one statement, after which you'll be taking some questions. Yes? Mm -hmm. Good morning. The statement goes as follows. The People's Progressive Party has noted with interest that the ruling APNU AFC coalition administration has maintained an eerie silence on the attack by Kaicho News columnist F. Kisu on the Cuban trained medical doctors. The party has also noted that, captured in the editor's note to a letter penned by Adonia Benjamin, a Cuban trained doctor, Mr. Kisu claimed that he did not say, quote unquote, all doctors and that he referred to many of them. However, his informant and collaborator on the subject, Mr. Adam Harris, in his Sunday column, Cytotech Use is Giving Me Nightmares, contradicts Mr. Kisun when he stated, quote, sadly, he, Mr. Kisun, painted with a large brush and smeared every Cuban trained doctor, end of quote. It is clear from this that all Cuban trained doctors have been condemned and their professionalism brought into disrepute by the Caicho News. The silence by the Granger administration on this matter, and worse yet, its failure to support the young professionals and to condemn the Caicho News is merely further evidence of the uncaring nature of the regime. Kisun and the Kaicho News have no doubt taken a cue from the APNU AFC coalition administration who have demonstrated a noticeable level of disdain for Cuban scholarship returnees, whether in the field of medicine or other disciplines. Further, the party notes that in spite of a contractual agreement which binds the Cuban trained doctors to five years of public service, and in light of the prevailing shortages of medical staff countrywide, some 92 trained doctors are still awaiting placement, having graduated and completed the compulsory one-year internship. This unpleasant insecure situation has been going on for about one year now. Since November 2015, the doctors have been complaining that they were being pushed around by the Ministry of Public Health and that they received vague responses to their queries as regards registration and placement. This is a reflection of the level of incompetence and maladministration by the APNU AFC administration. Student nurses matter. The party has also noted the disastrous situation plaguing the nursing sector. The most, in, the most recent manifestation of this being the uncertainty facing student nurses in connection with a controversy that has arisen over the claim by the Nursing Council about leaked exam papers. The party emphasizes with those student nurses who are disinclined to sit another set of examinations and calls upon the Ministry of Public Health and the Nursing Council to resolve the matter speedily and in the interests of the student nurses whose careers and professionalism for no justifiable reason is on the line. UG graduates, the People's Progressive Party extends warm congratulations and best wishes to the 1,628 graduates from the University of Guyana Turkine campus and the 250 graduates who graduated last weekend 
at the University of Guyana Kane campus. This is another remarkable achievement for our country and marks another milestone in our nation's efforts aimed at national capacity building and institutional strengthening. The government must now move to introduce scholarship support for online university education for students in the Amerindian communities. It must implement teleconferencing facilities between University of Guyana Turkine and Tain campuses, allowing for remote access to lectures for students in Barbies as well as in Georgetown. The PVP opposes the imposition of a graduation fee for potential graduates since it will result in greater hardship for students who can ill afford it. The government must move to improve the quality of education offered at Barbies and Turkine campuses and most importantly provide university level education to the residents of the Escribo course through the provision of extramural classes on the course with the view of establishing a university campus or the provision of online facilities. New and modern libraries for both campuses must be placed high on the agenda. With the graduation of 1,878 students armed with university education, it is the task of government to do as they promise, which is, quote, create jobs, jobs, and more jobs in the shortest time possible, end of quote. However, the Granger administration has failed to do so, and as if to add insult to injury, has admonished job seekers by telling them that, quote, employment is not something to be provided by government, and that they must find their own jobs. This is a clear dereliction of duty by an administration that claims it cares about young people, yet at the same time does everything to deny them a safe and secure future in their own country. GHRA crime and the Amerindian people. The PVP has noted with interest that the Guyana Human Rights Association, GHRA, has not uttered a single word on the crime situation in Guyana, nor expressed concerns whatsoever as regards the victims of the spiraling crime situation. The uncanny silence by the GHRA on the crime situation is reminiscent of its silence on the racial and political discrimination and victimization, as well as the witch hunting exercises currently being executed by the APNU AFC coalition administration against persons who, in their view, are perceived as supportive of the PVPC administration. The GHRA <coughs> Excuse me, has not uttered a single word expressing concerns over the arbitrary and capricious dismissal of 1,972 Amerindian newts from 187 villages and communities previously employed as community support officers under, under the Youth Entrepreneurship and Apprenticeship Program. The GHRA has completely and contemptuously overlooked the fact that these young Amerindian people have been discriminated against and denied the right to work, equality, and protection by the state. By virtue of this dastardly act, the Amerindian CSOs no longer enjoy the $30,000 payable $30,000 payable every three months to them. However, it is this very government 
who took away the $30,000 from the Amerindian youths have at the same time awarded themselves hefty salaries even before turning a straw as government minister. <coughs> the GHRA has turned a blind eye to this glaring act of discrimination and victimization of the Amerindian people, who, under the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People, the International Covenant on Economic and Cultural Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the Vienna Declaration preserves their right to be protected by the state of Guyana, who is party to these conventions and declarations. The PPP condemns the GHRA for neglecting what is clearly and advancing what is clearly a biased position on the crime situation as well as in respect to the plight of the Amerindian. Have you tried a new taste of Western fried chicken lately? Added flavor, marinated with rich seasonings and fresh ingredients, pressure fry to lock in the taste. Western fried buffalo wings, chicken strips and more. So take a bite into the good stuff today. Three convenient locations to serve you. Call the numbers on your screen for home delivery. Of the Amerindian people. Prime Minister Nakamoto. The PVP notes with utter disgust Empty, the empty talk by the Prime Minister, Moses Nagamutu, at his party's recent press conference. Mr. Nagamutu was quoted in the press stating that, quote, he will press Harmon for the mystery documents from China related to the U.S. $5 million outstanding payment due for the sale of government's gt and shares to a Chinese company. Further, Nagamutu on another matter, namely the controversial parking meter debacle, sought to obfuscate the issue and throw dust in the eyes of the public, stating that his party will, quote-unquote, devise a posture in the parliament if the speaker allows the PVP-sponsored motion to be debated in the House. This is a most bizarre statement coming from the Prime Minister of a country. In effect, what Nagamoto is saying is that the policy of the AFC on such a critical economic matter will be decided on the floor. In fact, his colleague Ramjatan had already declared that the parkimeter issue is a matter for the City Council and that Parliament cannot dictate to the City Council what position it should take or not take on a matter that is properly before the Council. Finally, Prime Minister Nagamoto and President Granger appears to be at odds as regards the methodology for constitutional reform and the pace with which consultations ought to proceed. It is to be recalled that Mr. Nagamutu was quoted as saying, quote, I want, by, I want to start by humbling the power of the president and the excess powers of the executive, end of quote. How Mr. Nagamutu will press Mr. Harmon to fulfill his wish is anybody's guess. It is to be recalled that this is the same person whose wings Mr. Nagamoto and company wanted to clip. Worse yet, how will the Prime Minister be able to press Harmon when he is powerless in light of the fact that the Cummingsburg Accord is now dead and buried with the AFC as mourners in witness to the burial? Thank you. Very hard hand. The statement. Now we'll ask your question. Yes, Adam. Yeah. Sir, please a couple of questions. I can start one at a time. Yes, please. All right. 
let's start with the Cuban doctor issue. Yeah. And you blame the government for not registering these doctors since last November. Isn't it the role of the Guyana Medical Council to register doctors? Not every time. Yeah, let me deal with the one. No, these are doctors, these are Guyanese young people that were sent abroad by the government on the basis of scholarships. While it, so first of all, let us establish that fact. They were government-sponsored scholarship awardees. Right. Number one. Number two, while in Cuba, it was the government of Guyana that took care of their welfare in through the embassy right. of Guyana in La Habana. Right. It was the government of Guyana that provided affairs to and from Havana. They even accept the cases where they travel privately on vacation, etc. On their return to this country, to our country, it is logical to expect that the government of Guyana will look into the welfare in all angles of these returned and qualified medical doctors. So while technically speaking, it is the council that is required to do as you say. Nevertheless, it is the government through the Ministry of Public Health that ought to take initiative or take steps to ensure that the Medical Council deal with this matters in the same way that the Ministry of Public Health has taken steps to look into the welfare and the concerns of the student nurses whose exams fall under the Nursing Council. So the Nursing Council is a state, well, state controlled body, but it isn't the Medical Council an independent authority in the same way as the Public Service Commission and all the other service commissions. Therefore, are you suggesting that the government should dictate to these bodies, if it dictated the Medical Council, by extension you should have a right to dictate to the private sector, commit to the Public Service Commission, the Police Service Commission, and so on? No, 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 no. I know where you're going, Mr. Adam Harris. I'm not going there. But that's where it starts. No, 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 no. I have not started there. Don't put words in my mouth. Right. I keep telling reporters, print what I say. Don't print what you interpreted me to have said. Because you will have a problem. All right. Next, next question. The next question is, on the G areas, that was the most recent. Mm -hmm. You say that the GH area, sorry, is silent and you're taking this body to task. Yeah. Is it the same Do you have a problem with that? Yes, sir. Because what? it was the same GH area yeah. that when you are in government and it was critical of your government, you choose to ignore, as a matter of fact, you criticize the GH area administration and you call the GH area at something of the past. So if it was dead and buried then, why should you resurrect it now? You don't resurrect anything now. The GHRA exists. It's a functioning organization. It, 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 keeps, it makes statements from time to time. Right. You know, it wakes up from time to time, Rip Van Winkle style. But whenever it makes a statement, or whenever we consider it necessary mm -hmm. to pronounce, on the GHRA's position on an issue or another, then we shall so do. Right. As we have done in this case, because we have noticed that, you know, in this crime situation, you have victims, as well as you have uh, people who are caught and charged and taken before the court. And that's the justice side. But what about the other side, the injustice side? You know, where a lot of young people, a lot of people are suffering. 
people are in jail awaiting trial. And so many things are happening, but the Ghana Human Rights Association is not saying anything so soon as though the human rights issue is biased in favor of one set of people as against them. the victim. And this is what we're raising our concerns over. Superfoods assures the best quality corn and mixed vegetables. Our decade of experience and reliability certainly will help your cooking experience. Our farm fresh corn and mixed vegetables are always picked at prime season and canned to perfection. Once you taste Superfoods corn and mixed vegetables, you will know the difference. Superfoods corn and mixed vegetables, highest quality at the lowest price. Call Superfoods today. Located at 8 Rumfeld Industrial Estate, Georgetown. Call 223-1030. Or two two three ten thirty five. One and the last one to know has to do with the student nurses issue, sir. Yeah. You said the student nurses are disinclined to sit another exam over allegation of leaked exam papers. Mm -hmm. At the national level, CXC to be exact, Guyana paid a lot of money over the same issue of leaked exams, and a larger number of Guyanese students had to reset, I think it was two examinations. What's the problem here if there is a suspicion of dishonesty and rewriting the exams? But that is precisely the point, that there is a suspicion. There is no evidence mm -hmm. of an incontrovertible to nature that would require the student nurses to reset the exam. So we should not convert suspicions into fact. And that, I believe, is very important. Other questions for you, other journalists want to ask before I come back? I don't know if you continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fear. Um, them free because well, there would have been enough. No, I ran out. They got other questions. They got other questions. Okay. I take wanted time, to go, take yeah, I wanted to go back to the question of the Cuban trade. No, I want to use you as a as a summary so, board for very good for Parliament this afternoon. Love it. I want to go back to the Cuban trained doctors. Mm -hmm. Um you would agree, sir, that some of the people who came back from Cuba so we, we had people who came back without qualifying and they disappeared, how do we bring them back? But we had people who came back with grades that were considered inadequate. Um, as I mentioned in my column, Vivian Mitchell is head of the Guyana Medical Council, had a problem registering those doctors then. So what is the problem with these? What were the grades that these 92 people had to put them in a hospital to deal with people sometimes in critical conditions? Well, here again, we have statements being made impugning the professionalism of forces of return as trained medical doctors. No, they don't come from this finish the training in Guyana. Pardon? We finish the training in Guyana, they come and they do their final year here. That's what I said. Okay. My statement, they did the internship yeah, 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 there for yeah, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so forth. But the statement that I saw over the weekend, you know, raises more questions than answers. And therefore it would seem to me that in the same way that the student nurses are concerned about their future professionals in the nursing sector. It is logical to expect that these young doctors would be concerned also about their future in the medical sector as well, but at, 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 the, at the doctoral level. So what we're hearing doesn't seem to be convincing to the population at large. We're hearing individual views being expressed by an individual. But who has taken into a consideration the collective interests of these returned uh, medically trained doctors? 
we've taken that into, co into consideration. It is the government, as I said before, there, it is for them. I'm not suggesting, and I've never suggested anything of this sort, either in my statement or in my preliminary remarks, that the government must, you know, go and interfere or direct the medical council or give instructions to the medical council. I'm very cautious with my language. I said that the government must take the initiative to seek to advance the interests of the medical doctors to ensure that all the measures that are required of them, because who will they turn to? They have to turn to the subject ministry. In the same as the nurses turn to the subject ministry, the doctors will turn to the subject minister or the subject ministry to assist them in advancing the process. How they will do that is a matter I believe that most likely will be in keeping with certain protocols. I don't think the doctors are demanding any interference that anybody go up with like a bull in the China shop. So let the protocol be followed. But someone has to take the initiative. Now I don't expect that these doctors will go trooping one by one, knocking at the door of the medical council. You know, so it's better for the government, the Ministry of Public Health, to represent these persons. Because in the final analysis, they're going to work in the public health sector for the five years based on contract. And therefore, it is for the government through the Ministry of Health to pursue and look into the interests and the welfare of these young people, rather than have them individually go in and knock on the door. They, and in fact, they ought not to do that. So somebody has to take care of the interests, and I believe the onus falls on the Ministry of Public Health to do so in a manner that is consistent with whatever protocols or procedures that is required to be done. So did we make any effort to approach the Medical Council? I mean, the party, for Ooh. example. Did the party try to talk to members of the Medical Council to find out why these doctors have not been registered? No, no, no. We haven't done that. But we've heard representation. Persons have come here making representation to um, acquaint us, mm -hmm. merely to acquaint us and to bring us up to date with what is happening in respect to their um, as we would usually say, the issues affecting them. And did we try to ascertain the grades of these doctors who are in limbo? What did they come back with? What kind of grades? Did they come back mediocre? Did they come back as highly skilled? How did they? That, that, no, no. I don't think no one to access to get it. That is for the medical council, exactly. the Ministry of Health, and the Cuban authorities to establish. Whether it's an internal matter, right? That is something that ought to be established in a tripartite, you know, in a tripartite, uh, through a tripartite approach. The Cuban authorities, the council and the government. Council and the government. Well, suppose that was actually done, hence the people in limbo. Well, I can't, I, I can't act on speculation. All right. Any other question? What do you think of the other question? Are you finished? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, my colleagues probably want to go over here. I want to stop them. All right, thank you. Thank you.